yeah, I just wanted to cover a few things when it comes to structuring meetings remotely and um, showing you the Mural app itself so you can actually kind of play around with it a little bit. And then I'll cover some of the things related to kind of physical structural elements of the meeting. So kind of time management, voting sessions, and how to kind of facilitate that on Mural itself when we, when we have a few people online. Just to sit down with them, you know, it's not just about the post-it notes, but actually how you structure the exercises, how you design those, etc. So <clears throat> I'll be sharing the screen. I can show you around the mural first a little bit. So let me just share the screen. I'm just going to go uh, with my little... Um, that's two, that's three. That's the zoom in. Let's get right into it. And um, that's me sharing it in this beautiful circle, which is great. Everything works. Okay, and let me share on the zoom call as well. Uh, can you actually see my screen on the zoom call? Okay, is that is that enough of a... Um, uh, when it comes to the mural itself, the app is pretty basic, it's pretty simple, uh, and it basically is structured into three three elements. Uh, the way to get to your mural is, is, is kind of, um, this is your dashboard that I'm showing you now. So we've got the, the, the name of the room, uh, we've got some private rooms, and we've got some open rooms. We were in the open room now, which is called Design Thinking at Night, May the 7th, so today. And um, it's been created by me, obviously. And um, the main aspect of this whole dashboard is basically multiple, um, kind of multiple murals that we can have access to and kind of play around with or create new ones, right? So I've created one already, so let's just go into that one. You just click on it and you get into the, into the actual mural. And mural is pretty much just a huge um, sheet of paper that we can glue some stuff onto, uh, you know, draw some shapes, write some words with, with written text, glue some post-it notes on it, you know, draw some graphs, uh, diagrams, etc. And that's pretty much uh, you know, it's like a flip chart online. So you can actually do that collaboratively with a lot of people. Uh, and that's pretty much the gist of this, this whole thing. Uh, <clears throat> it's subdivided into the kind of three elements. The first one is the top bar. So as you can see it over here, there's a sidebar um, and there's kind of this little zoom setting kind of navigation pane uh, that you can kind of see where, where you are because these murals tend to be pretty large. I'm going to zoom out. If you look, if you use like commands minus or uh, control minus on the PC, you're able to kind of zoom out, and if you use Command Plus or Control, my, Control Plus on the PC, you're able to zoom in. So this is kind of a, a way to actually do it. You can ob obviously do it also with these little icons, minus and plus, to zoom in and out. But as you can see, I've zoomed out mm, to, to the maximum level, and um, this is our entire mural. Now, if you um, if you have ever done a workshop, you, you we usually use these kind of... Um, Post-it notes, like uh, 75 millimeters by 75, I think. It's like the Rubik's Cube size, I think, something like that. So if I double-click anywhere on the mural, I'm going to generate a post-it note of that size. And as you can see, it's pretty small, right? So that's kind of the size of the of the thing uh, in real, um, yeah, in real kind of figures, right? So that little yellow post-it note, that's pretty much the size of the mural in, in kind of human form, right? <clears throat> so, so I can get rid of that one and going back to the structure of this entire tool. The first one is the top bar. We can change the name. We can change them some settings of, of, of the mural. We can export it just to some PDFs or PNGs. We can share the mural with others, and I will share that mural with you very shortly. We can, so we can, we can adjust some settings of that mural, which is basically kind of going into the name, the background color, as well as the size of this thing, which is pretty, you know, if I change it to dark, um, dark gray, it's going to become dark gray. So it's pretty basic, pretty, pretty easy to, um, to kind of uh, do that. I usually use like a slightly pale gray, not white, but pale gray, so that when I put a white post-it note on it, I can actually see it. And the mural size we can affect here or choose it here. You've got a, a kind of a, a illustration uh, showing you the, the size of a human being, an average human being probably, kind of in, in reference to the, to the size of the, of, of the mural itself. And it's measured either in pixels, feet, or meters, whatever you want. Um, so that can be actually useful if you're going to print it out and you know get get to, to, to the meters so that you know what you have to play with. Uh, so that's pretty much done, right? Um, the way to, to, to work with this whole tool, as I say, there's a top bar. So we have the settings of it all. We've got undo and redo kind of icons. Pretty easy. You can do the command Z or command um, V. Uh, sorry, command Z or shift command Z uh, to kind of redo all, any action that you've done. And then you have elements related to <clears throat> voting sessions, and we will cover that today, as well as the timer, which we'll cover here today as well. Then we have something uh, called the facilitator. So because I am the owner of this mural, I can facilitate the entire workshop, and I have some superpowers. So I can run the timer. When you get onto mural, you won't be able to have access to the timer itself. So you'll be able to, be, uh, to see me using it. Uh, so we're going to have to kind of jump in and out of me sharing the screen and you uh, kind of using the browser yourself. So that's, uh, that's that. 
And then uh, we have a capability to summon everyone. So from time to time, when I want to describe something in detail, I'm going to summon you guys to my um, to what I'm looking at uh, w with this summon feature. This is pretty powerful. And you know, whenever people kind of you know wander off into the distance and kind of work away on their own, you can actually summon them to whatever you're looking at as a as a facilitator. Then we have some outline instructions. I rarely use this. Uh, and then uh, and then we have some super lock features as well. So I can super lock elements on the interface, so that you as uh, members uh, you won't be able to unlock them. Only I, I will be able to unlock those. I can manage those facilitator powers as well. Uh, add some new people to, to that uh, facilitation um, as well. And that's pretty much it, right? So I've got uh, that. Then we've got got it. And um, this is the amount of people that join. These are the sharing capabilities. So I usually use um, either invite people that are actually using uh, Mural. So they can kind of have a subscription. Then I can find them here. Or the way that I'll do it today, I've got the anonymous link and I'll just share it to you guys um, I can copy that link. I'll put it in the chat on YouTube as well as Facebook as well as um, as Zoom, and then we can actually play around a little bit with it. Um, and that's and that's pretty much it, right? Uh, you can export it into some shape or form like PDF, PNG. These are the main two elements that I actually export these uh, neurons to, um, and that's pretty much it. You know, when it comes to I can embed it, but that's really rarely being used by me. Uh, so that's that, and that's the export feature. Then we've got some additional elements like the chat, so we can kind of chat around with each other or kind of leave a message for somebody that, um, you know, visited the mural for some reason when we weren't here. So we can kind of leave a message for them and they'll be able to have access to that message when they return. So that's that. Then we have the comments and I won't be getting into the comments too much today, but it's something I can actually comment on the mural itself and it's going to be an additional layer on top of that that I can switch on and off. Uh, then we have some activity. So everything that I did, you can see uh, that deleted sticky note that I've put in over here, uh, you know, a few minutes ago. I can recover that, obviously. And I, I, we will have a list of all of the activities on the mural itself. So that's that. And then the last but not least, these are like, you know, outlines of the instructions for people. If we're not here, then we have some find features, you know, so I can search something on the mural itself. And that's pretty much it as far as the entire top bar is concerned. So top bar is more about kind of managing the entire meeting, uh, facilitating it, uh, the timer uh, capabilities, voting sessions. So this is more for the facilitator to adjust the size of the mural, the background elements, all of those, sharing it and exporting it. So this is more for you as a facilitator to actually work with, right? And this is mainly as the process would go to facilitate, to manage, right? So when you guys join, I'll be able to kind of uh, use the facilitator superpowers to do some um, some crazy things like voting sessions and timing the exercises. So that's that. Then we have a, another panel on the left, and that's to design the mural. The main kind of um, feature list over here is in order to for us to put a design together. And you can put you know various different elements like uh, the text uh, or the title. Then we have some text boxes. We've got some comments uh, that, that 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 I mentioned so far already. We can put obviously a sticky note. Uh, we can just drag and drop it to our beautiful mural. I'm going to zoom in using the command plus or, uh, you know, with this one. I can see that post-it note, as you can see on this little navigator screen. So I can actually navigate kind of dragging through here if you prefer. So that's uh, sometimes a little bit easier with these massive murals. They, they tend to get really massive over time. I tend to use this thing uh, more because I'm kind of, I know what the structure is and where those bigger elements are. So I either zoom in and out or I actually move around using this uh, navigation pane. So that's uh, that. All right, so we can basically drag and drop elements from this little um, uh, side uh, menu over here, and we can obviously type stuff in them, right? So these are pretty much the three, three types of different post-it notes. We've got square ones, three by three, then we have uh, three by five, and we have a circle one. And we can obviously edit the size of those if we need to. I rarely use that. I prefer to kind of zoom everything around them so that whenever I double click, the post-it note is always the same size and I can just work with it pretty, pretty quickly. And the great thing about Mural is that, first of all, if I do double click and there's a post-it note being generated, I can immediately go into edit and I can, you know, type some stuff in. This is vastly different from when you're working with, for example, Google Jamboard. When you generate a post-it note, a big pop-up screen, you know, shows itself and then you start, you know, it's not as easy to do. So that's that. These are the post-it notes. One cool feature of the post-it note also, and we'll play around with that, is this little uh, feature over here. And every element has a feature like that, like a little popover with additional uh, items. But if we change the post-it note into any, any other color, you can edit you know, the, the border color, the post-it color. And if we do edit that, uh, Mural will, will remember that last um, choice that you made. So you'll be able to, if you now double click and generate additional post-it note, 
it'll remember that choice. So it will kind of correspond to whatever's around it and remember your, your, your last choices. Uh, and also what is pretty, pretty neat is that if I do click away from our pink post-it notes, close to the yellow ones, it's going to remember that context. So it's kind of contextual, right? So it's, it's pretty powerful because I don't need to edit. Once I have built a structure around this whole tool, I can then easily kind of generate these post-it notes and play around with it pretty easily, right? So that's uh, that. Then we go into shapes and connectors. So I can generate some shapes like squares, triangles, etc. It's pretty basic, pretty easy. The cool thing about this, I can actually use these connectors to connect these things together. So if I do take that connector onto the mural, I can actually connect it to one of those to to one of those. Uh, uh, it kind of snaps in place and changes color from this white circle to this blue circle. And then when I drag and drop elements, it's going to maintain that connection. So that's pretty powerful, pretty cool for your kind of charts and, um, and all of those elements related to how to, you know, build process maps, for example, etc. So it's pretty useful for that. Um, and that's pretty much it when it comes to, to shapes and connectors. That's pretty much it. Then we have icons. So we can search uh, a magnitude of, of, of different icons. And, and, you know, this is not the whole list. If I just type in checkbox, for example, or check you'll be able to see that it kind of asks some sort of a database for those. So pretty powerful. Uh, then we go into some frameworks. So you can actually drag and drop some design, agile, business, um, you know, model, uh, canvases onto the mural. So you just drag and drop it and you can use it, you know, uh, pretty easily. So it's got a lot of these pre-made templates. I rarely use that because I prefer to design my own tools for my meetings. So I know exactly how much time I've got and how I manage those. So I'm going to delete that. To get rid of any element of the mural, you can actually highlight it and then use the backspace on the uh, on the Mac or delete on the on the PC, or you can actually highlight it, right click, and an additional menu will pop up and you can actually delete it through here. So that's that. I'm going to get rid of all of those elements. Uh, moving on to the next one, we've got some images that we can import and search for. We've got some files you can import from your computer, Drive, uh, OneDrive, or Dropbox as well. And one last but not least feature is the drawing feature. So I can actually draw some stuff around mural. It's not the best feature overall. Uh, I can have access to like ultra fine lines, uh, a little bit medium kind of, you know, a little bit like fine, ultra fine, fine and um, medium lines. And I can also have access to some highlighters and change their colors, obviously, with some consistent interactions. And that's pretty okay to do. Uh, the problem with the drawing feature is that when I'm done drawing, it kind of saves it as one element and I cannot edit it anymore. So. Be cautious when you draw stuff on Mural because uh, you will have to either redraw it if you want to change something or yeah, just delete it overall. So that's that. And that's pretty much it when it comes to all the features when it comes to what do you have as, tool, as a toolkit to design the Mural and the, the facilitation features that you have uh, at the very uh, top of your um, or uh, at the very top of your bar. Okay, so now moving on and let's, uh, what I'm going to do now is, um, is show you a few things when it comes to um, kind of the foundation uh, foundation of, of how I structure my um, my workshops online and how, kind of how I facilitate those. So there's a, a few phases to, to all of this. The first one to me, I'm going to be using Mural to, to describe all of those things, but the first one is, well, actually I'm going to use uh, another tool. I'm going to do a text, a title. And the first one is something that I do try to define very early on is the outcome of the meeting. So I want to make sure that when I go into the meeting, I have a defined outcome. What am I trying to get out of that meeting with as a result? So that's the first thing that I'm trying to tackle uh, when I start to design these things. And uh, so that's, that's, that's the first thing. And I'm going to put it to the right because that's kind of that's the end, right? We should start with it as far as the design is concerned. But this is the end result that we get out of, uh, of the meeting itself. Another thing that's uh, very crucial is the input. So what am I coming to the meeting with? So this is the outcome that I want to achieve, but what do I need as input into that meeting? What kind of um, information I need to actually get to that outcome? And the third one, actually there's like two additional elements. So let's just break those down. And that's attendees, attendees and the time we have, right? The time frame. So we're going to we're, we're going to work with an actual kind of solid example around that. Um, so I'm sure that you know most of you have ever been in a meeting, right? By a show of hands, uh, have you ever been to a meeting? All <laughs> right, probably too many of those. Uh, pretty much like everyone. Uh, yeah, Anoop. <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay. So um, when it comes to to structuring these things, this is my 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 kind of starting thing. So I go input. What is the outcome? What do I need to achieve that outcome? Who do I need to invite? And how much time do I have to get there, right? So let's imagine that the outcome that we're trying to achieve 
is um, uh, solving some issues. So let's imagine that we're on a project team or we're in a, you know in an office environment and somebody came up with um, yeah you know there was a, a problem with the project you know and um, you know there's a a cock up or a fuck up if you want you know there's something wrong and let's imagine that a person highlighting this thing as emailing you saying dude we found three problems with this endeavor so the outcome of that specific meeting would be well you know let's resolve those issues right so let's set up a meeting and i'm sure you've been part of many of those it's like let's do a brainstorm let's figure out a way to solve some issues and let's do a meeting with 25 people and then try to solve that so um the outcome would be solving the problems right uh, or i would say solving three problems to be to be exact right and the input would be those specific three problems right so i'm going to name that obviously differently but the input is the three problems themselves right and that's as easy as i keep this i just want to make sure that i know what the input to that meeting is okay i've got three problems to solve as an outcome so therefore I need to kind of know about those three problems. So we will have additional kind of elements of maybe familiarizing people with those problems before we actually get to the meeting. And that will have an impact on the amount of time we waste to actually talk about those five, three problems, right, on the meeting. Uh, so that's one thing we will tackle. Uh, so we have three problems that are there and we need to make sure that that's an input. Everybody understands what those are. And we want to get to an outcome of solving those three problems. Now, how many attendees um, we need to invite will kind of vastly differ depending on what the problems are, etc. But we don't want to keep these um, these kind of sessions too big when it comes to kind of running them. So I think that it pretty much is equal to our physical way of working. So when you do schedule a Zoom call with people and you want to manage it somehow, I would invite five to seven people max. So let's just imagine that we invite five people over to that specific meeting. The key people that have any resemblance of the problems or, or kind of reference to it or can actually solve them or have any information that can relate to them or those problems have a huge impact on their work. So that's that and these I would kind of connect to the outcome I'm trying to achieve specifically but to the input as well. Uh, but more specifically these guys need to be outcome related more because the input they can learn about during the workshop or before it, right? So you can send them a list of something, you know, get, your famil get, get yourself familiarized with that because we will be tackling that on the workshop itself. So the input is there for us as a designer of this workshop. The attendees are there to deliver the outcome for us when we manage it. And when we manage it, we obviously need a time frame. So I'm going to assume 60 minutes to start with. Um, I'm pretty sure that most of you have been, you know, kind of running their, their, their calendar like I have. Uh, you know, and a lot of people kind of dump these 60 minute, 60 minute slots into the calendar like that's um, that's the only way, you know, that's the only time frame they could actually work at. I, I believe that Bill Gates, he structures his, his meetings into six minute meetings. So every hour he has 10 meetings. Each one of those um, takes six minutes. And therefore, because Bill Gates only has six minutes, the outcome has to be really kind of on point. So it has to be manageable within six uh, six minutes it needs to well there's there's just me probably maybe a few guys that can support me within those six minutes to tackle something with bill so it's probably just bill and me and some supportive staff with me or is it just me and bill and then the input i need to make sure that i've got it synthesized structured properly and that i can tell bill about it in one minute so that bill's like okay i understand it do this right and the outcome i'm trying to get is the decision of bill to towards something right so that's uh, that's that so the input and the attendees and the time frame, the outcome, these are the four elements that I look at when I structure the meeting first. And this really dramatically helps me with designing of the workshop, right? Because now I know how many people I need, uh, how much time I have, what is the input of those elements, uh, and, and what am I trying to achieve? So hypothetically, there are three problems, and we're, we would like to get to solving those problems with probably as many solutions or potential solutions as possible. So that's the first thing when it comes to the structure of this thing when I start to design the, the tool to, uh, or putting it together. So that's the first thing. The second one is I need to understand one specific thing about the workshop and we will be very heavily using that structure when we start to design it and kind of running with it. And that's um, phases of work. And there's five of those, five phases of work. And, um, and I'm, before I get into the phases of work, is the structure understandable guys, as far as the input outcome, all of those elements, by the show of fingers, thumbs up, thumbs down. Pretty basic, right? Pretty easy. So the outcome and input is pretty easy to, to, to tackle. I'm looking at the, okay, Facebook as well. Cool. 
Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook and YouTube, definitely sign up and kind of not sign up, join up on the on the Zoom call. There's a link in, in, in the description and in, in the event itself. So we are waiting for you. Um, so phases of work, five of them. And I always very deeply enforce those on every meeting that I do. And the first one is <clears throat> the introduction. And you'll see how these differ, but the, the type of the, the, the phase is exactly the same. So there's the introduction, then we have individual work, then we have individual presentation, then we have group vote, slash maybe discussion a little bit, and summary. So these are the five main stages of, of, of the workshop that I always keep when I'm facilitating it, when I have these people on, when I'm running the tool. This is relevant to the time management. This is relevant to the way I structure this exercise and how I run the entire thing. And it differs on the basis of who's doing what. So as far as I'm going to change the, the, the color of this into maybe like bluish. So the introduction is down. So this is, let's just go with maybe. If you kind of drag and drop elements holding the option key or the alt key on the, on the PC, you'll be able to drag and copy at the same time. So the input, these are the, the kind of the, um, the phases. And these are the, uh, I will, I'll just call them people or, or roles. Oh, that's, that's the word. That's the word. Roles on the meeting. So the introduction is down to you. So if you're facilitating something, you need to introduce people to the exercise, to the stage of the exercise, to the actual workshop, to the outcome, to everything that you need them to do on this specific meeting. So this is the facilitator. Then when it comes to individual work, these are the workshop attendees attendees so that's everybody sits down and does some individual work first so you, you introduce them to something and they the the backbone of this foundation for me is i hate discussions that lead to nowhere so i want to make sure that people know what they're talking about so that they have some time to synthesize their thoughts first before they start talking i want them to first this is the exercise have a think you know, spend two minutes on it, one minute on it, 120 seconds, I don't care. Just have a think first individually, list some stuff down, pre-synthesize what, what, what are you going to say, and then uh, present whatever you've kind of come up with, right? So that's the, again, uh, that's in these themselves. All right, and then we have the group vote. So that's the entire kind of, uh, the entire group. And the summary belongs to the facilitator yet again. Right? Is that understandable, guys, as far as the, how to structure this thing? Okay, cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you the link to Mural so you can actually play around. And what I would like to do, I'll be summoning you from time to time. So the first kind of two or three minutes, I will give you just to, um, uh, to do one exercise that I would like, before I send you the link, I would like to first introduce you to, to the exercise. So what I would like to get uh, as an outcome of this exercise is going to take us like two minutes. Uh, there is one challenge with Mural when you share it an anonymously, and that's everybody's going to be given an icon with a, an, a funny animal. And uh, it's going to have a certain color, but I won't know who's who. So the outcome of this exercise for me is so that I know exactly that, you know, anonymous, uh, I don't know, whale is uh, Salvatore, for example, right? So all I need for you to do within the, the next one minute or two is to go to one of those elements on the left, so kind of designing your own thing, uh, finding your way around the mural wherever you are. I'll be able to find you through the follow feature. And um, just using the text kind of title, I'll, I'll introduce you to, to, to that in detail. So I'll take the title and just name yourself what kind of animal you are, given by a uh, mural, obviously, not, uh, not like physically. Um, and um, uh, it's going to be anonymous uh, mouse, let's say. And... That's the text, so you'll use the text feature, right? So you just use the title or the text box, I, I don't care. Just do that. So uh, if you want to zoom out, move around the mural, find a little place for yourself somewhere, and then double click, on, uh, double click underneath that so that you can actually put your name in. So I know that anonymous mouse is, for example, uh, Andrea, right? And that's, that's the exercise. If you can differentiate your post-it note using this little feature of the color, Corresponding with the color of your animal, because you'll, you'll be given a color, that'll be even better. But that's not a requirement, okay? Guys, everything understandable as far as this first little exercise is concerned? Awesome. And from now on, we'll just be uh, on, on the mural itself. So um, 
I'll be kind of summoning you just to just to run, run you through some of those exercises. So let me just go to the export, or no, the share, obviously. Anonymous link. I'm going to copy that link. It's copied. Close the window. I'm going to go to the chat on um, on Zoom. Type this bad boy in. There you go. So now, if you click that link, you'll be able to gain, gain access to, to the mural. You probably won't be able to see my uh, screen share anymore because now you'll be immersed in this beautiful world of the mural app. Um, so I'm seeing, yeah, I'm seeing like anonymous uh, seahorse and, and horse and a monkey, etc. So the exercise individually starts now. So I'm going to give you a few minutes using the, the, the time feature and I'll give you like two minutes to play around, get yourself familiarized with, um, with uh, you know, different little elements and um, the title and your name underneath the, uh, the title, which kind of describes the animal you're, you are. Uh, yeah, describes the animal you are. That's kind of, yeah. Whatever. Anyway, moving on. All right. So Chris is the anonymous seahorse. Andrea is the anonymous mouse, is it? Uh, that's mine. So I'll get rid of that one. Sorry. <clears throat> All right, greetings from Wrocław, PL. That's awesome. That's great. Hello, Veroni. I'm at the very Baltic Sea, at the very north, you know. It's like Baltic here, you know. I can see the Baltic Sea actually outside of my window. Um, so it's pretty, pretty okay. Some of the ships there, you know. Me being a romantic, that definitely adds to the picture. All right. So we've got one more minute left. So... Whenever I'm on the Zoom call and I'm kind of facilitating the structure, I want to make sure that um, the people kind of have the right time to, to, to do these things, play around with it, introduce them, do the individual work. <laughs> also, Rosso, greetings. Good. That's happy. Happy to hear. Awesome. I love it. You know, I love the, you know, the, the, the coursers flying around. This is cool. All right. So we're like 30, 30 seconds in. So just play around a little bit more and then we'll move. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Uh, I think that if you actually scroll around a little bit with your with your mouse uh, cursor, you'll be able to, I believe, um, to, 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 to say, or I'm not really sure, to be honest. Let me just check that. If I, if I actually use the link and get on mural anonymously. All right. Let me just see, because that's a good question. Let me just see. Let me just see. That's interesting. I thought that there will be a way to actually, you know, showing yourself, but let me see, let me see. Paste, edit neural science, add area. Ah, that's an interesting thing. I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have a think. I'll have a think about it, how to actually do that. Now, can you follow me? Uh, just do click on me. This, there is this little A at the very bottom. And if you follow me, kind of, you know, click that uh, A, which is, you know, my, you know, the, the capital letter of my, of, my, of my name, I'll be able to see that you're following me and you're the anonymous gorilla. So that's how I would find out at the worst case scenario that that's you. So you're the anonymous gorilla. But, you know, everybody else kind of somehow they found out how to do it. So it's an interesting, um, if you can pitch in with an answer of how you found out about the animal you're on, I'd be pretty interesting because that's a, an interesting question. I'll, 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 I'll get into that. Okay, guys. So uh, the time has. So um, let's just move on to the next one. So that's um, how I would individually kind of structure these simple exercises first. And obviously, everybody kind of had a say, uh, and now would be the time, you know, to everybody kind of, you know, introduce themselves and kind of say a few words. Uh, so let's just break it down, you know, maybe, Anoop, can you just, uh, I'm going to time you, so the, just to show you the mechanics, I'll give you 60 seconds, just to, you know, say what animal you are, you are, and kind of, you know, one, one sentence about you, you know, your hobby or something. So I'm going to start the timer, and that's, and that's exactly how I did, and because, uh, the subsequent step in the in the process of phases of working is individual presentations. There is how many people here? Uh, if I summon you guys to me, uh, there's nine of us, eight of us, right? Uh, so I need eight minutes. If I give everybody one minute to, to, to say a few words, I need eight minutes to tackle that specific exercise, right? So I need to count that in. But it dramatically speeds up the process of getting to the end outcome because everybody has a say. You know how many people there are. You can manage the time to the minute and um, yeah, and you have pre-synthesized discussion, not uh, post-synthesized, like post-mortem where you're like discussing, 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 and it takes 20 minutes and there's no results. There's no written form of, of anything. So that's why the individual work first 
And then individual presentation is so crucial because then once we have done the exercise, we can then do a group vote. Everybody's heard their stories. We can then do a vote and kind of come up with, um, yeah, with that. So let's maybe just do that. And um, what I wanted to do uh, without being judgmental, guys, obviously, I'm going to run a voting session and I'll give each one of you uh, three votes. And you need to, it was kind of quite of a mess over here, and we'll tackle that right now um, in, the next, in the next phase. But if you can vote on the, or your favorite animal with the three votes, and the way that it works, I'll give you three votes. Uh, I will be managing the time as well, so I'll give you 60 seconds to do that. And um, the way to do it is uh, you can actually add three votes on one post-it note, or you can kind of, uh, you know, add one to, to, to one animal and then two votes to the other. So it's all down to you. You can uh, distribute those votes however you want them. Uh, and if you want to uh, kind of delete the vote, um, all you need to do is a shift click and it's going to delete that vote from that specific card. So I'm going to start the voting session. I'm going to give you three votes per person. We're going to name this favorite animal. Three votes, any member, that's cool. And next. And I'm going to run the time, begin voting, off you go. One minute. So wherever we see these anonymous horses or anything, anonymous bees, just vote on the card of, or on the name of the person that's associated with that animal as a vote um, of your favorite animal, right? So I, see, I can see there's an additional feature of, of Neural that I can actually see whoever has voted already and whoever has any votes left. So I'm going to go maybe with uh, Anonymous Horse, Kihana, and uh, Natalia. There you go. So I have voted. And I can see that anon Anonymous Panda is still, um, and Giraffe, they're still um, thinking. An anonymous raccoon and shrimp is still also um, having a, a few thoughts about what to do. So shrimp is done. An anonymous raccoon, that's probably me, uh, on, the, on the anonymous kind of um, tab. So that's why I haven't voted. So shrimp needs one more vote. And who's the shrimp? Let me, let me see that. Who is the shrimp? Who is the shrimp? Anonymous gorilla. <laughs> I can't see that. Okay, no worries. I'm going to end the voting session. And now you'll be able to see... Um, and session for everyone. Now that yeah, Anoop. Uh, so that's the that's the gorilla. You've won. <laughs> so there's a prize. <laughs> we'll give you a prize at the end of this session. Uh, it's going to be an exciting one. Uh, so Anoop has been voted um, the top the top animal <laughs> in the group. So that's cool. <laughs> and then we have all the subsequent kind of uh, votes. So like unique voters that voted on Natalia, Andrea, Chris Panda, etc. And Aspire Salvatore received two votes, etc. So you can always see the results and you can always come back to those. So you can close the window as the, as the facilitator and then you can uh, kind of see and highlight those votes. You can, you're able still to see, you're still able to see the results on the cards until I kind of uh, kill them, right? So I can just click this X and they disappear from all the post-it notes and we can move on to the next one, right? So that's the voting session and that's a group exercise. And because everybody had a say, obviously not today, but um. Anup would have a say, Bartosz, Chris, everybody would have a one-minute say. Uh, probably that's why Anup won, because he had the say, you know? That's the impact of information. And, um, uh, and that's, everybody's on the same page, so we know exactly what we're voting against, right? And then all it takes is just timing, uh, a simple voting session, and we're done. And then, as a facilitator, I can summarize the vote, saying that, okay, we have picked, uh, you know, the anonymous gorilla as our favorite animal, you know, great, uh, fantastic, uh, everybody goes for a beer. Uh, if we could. So that's pretty much when it comes to the phases of working, how I break that down. And um, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of the entire exercise when it comes to uh, understanding that the phases of working. And um, every session that I do um, on a workshop, you know, back when, it was, when they were still physical, and also currently, is I always break it down into this structure um, because it helps me with first managing the time and uh, also everybody has a say and I know how much time I've got left and everybody's on the same page. And I think that every exercise that you do ever, uh, whatever that meeting is, it's always going to follow that specific structure because it doesn't matter what we're talking about. Are we talking about problems, uh, stakeholders, uh, business goals, uh, I don't know, vision ideas, product ideas, whatever that is, you know, production issues, whatever that is, there's always a list of those. There isn't, there, there, there's never one, you know, problem to solve. There's always a list of problems, list of ideas. And therefore, it's good to come with that input as a whole list, list it out, get everybody introduced to that. 
get them familiarized with it, give them a simple text to work with it. Then they present their way of thinking about that subject matter. And then everybody's like, okay, so let's put it up to a vote. No discussions, no, you know, blah, blah, blah. Unless there is a need to actually, you know, ask a few questions, you know, what did you mean by that, etc. cetera. Uh, that's where that group, just before the group vote, we can open up to a few, you know, maybe one minute for a question and that's it. And then we just do the vote, we summarize it and we move on to the next one, right? So that's, is that kind of understandable, guys? As far as the, um, yeah, cool, awesome. So that's the phases of work. These are the, stru that's the structure, how I kind of build that together. And now let's go into time management and how to build those exercises together. Uh, we've got like seven minutes. I'm, I'm here as long as we need to, guys. So, so no worries at all. If you have any, any questions, just definitely fire away and we can kind of break it down and, and, uh, and I can respond to those uh, easily. Uh, we have all the time in the world, ish. So phases of work and now time management. So as you probably you know, saw or noticed me doing, uh, I have given you a specific amount of time for each one of those exercises, right? And this is something that I usually actually present on the tool so that people are familiar how much time they have for each one of those. And these are always broken down into these five phases. So the way that I do it is any given tool that, um, that I use, so I'm gonna go, to, I'm gonna go time management and we've done this, uh, let's say, animal, favorite animal, right? So that's what we did. And I'll show you how I break down the time. So for every session, every part of the exercise, I use this five level structure. So I've introduced it to it. Uh, I've introduced you as participants to the tool, right? So I said, we're gonna be putting a title and an animal of that 10. And Anup had some, um, uh, some, um, uh, some questions, so we need to allow for that additional time, you know, within that. So, you know, I've given myself two minutes and I've met that time, right? Then you were given, um, I think, two minutes to do the individual work to put the title on, play around with mural, kind of put it all together, highlight the animal, etc. And I've given you two minutes to do that. And then uh, we were given one minute to present to each other. But because there is nine of us here, that is one minute of presentation individually times nine people, right? So that's nine minutes overall. And then we had a group vote. I've given you two minutes for that. And I've summarized it again in two minutes. And therefore, I know that when I come into the meeting using the structure, I'm at, you know, at a minute level when it comes to the granularity of my preparation, I know exactly how much time I need, how every little sliver of that exercise is broken down, and I manage it perfectly that way. Obviously, I allow myself for a little bit of room. I have a detailed agenda out of that. And then I can actually run it and control whatever happens. So I usually plan so that people leave five minutes before the actual workshop ends. Today it's different because we are open to questions so we can do as long as we want to, but that's what I'm trying to do. There's a question from Natalia, uh, Natalia so I'm just gonna break that down. Is there any way so we generate ideas individually and only later you make it visible on the screen? So everyone has own space on the board and we are not moving each other's uh, post-its and steal ideas, <laughs> right? Um, well, there is a specific way to do that. The way that I would, if, if, there, if it is a need for people to work individually and, um, uh, and uh, on that basis, um, there is a risk of stealing each other's ideas or, or getting too much of the inspiration from the, from the person right next to you. The way that I do it is I create specific individual murals for that. So if we go to, uh, to the back to the dashboard, I can just create a new mural and let's say um, this one, create a new mural. I'm going to call this, uh, since Natalia asked the question, it's gonna be Natalia's mural. That's that. And I give Natalia all the room in the world to do that. And I'm gonna actually using this specific question, I'll, I'll show you one additional element that I always do. And it really works pretty neatly. So as you can see, I've adjusted the size of the mural just using uh, instead of going to mural, mural settings and all that, you know, and then sizing it with pixels, whatever you want to imagine, you can basically drag on, kind of put your cursor of the mouse on, on top of the side right and the bottom sides of the mural are kind of editable. And then you can actually drag around and, you know, and be happy. So uh, drag around and be happy. It sounds like a title of a song. Anyway, <clears throat> so Natalia um, is a mural. So the way that I would do this is I would break down this specific example using the example of a favorite animal. And if we need to do it really individually, so we don't steal each other's uh, you know, thoughts, I would do it this way. So I would go into um, 
Can you see uh, my screen, guys? Are you are you looking at the screen share, or are you still kind of yeah? So that you know exactly what I'm what I'm working on. Okay, cool. Um, so the way that I would do it is I would first generate a post-it note somewhere, just to get the sizing of this whole thing, and then I would put a title. I would probably do a subtitle to this just to give additional kind of um, um, you know the, the description of what, what's to be done if I'm not here and I thought I can actually follow up on that and this gives me the size of the post-it note right so what I do is I go to the next element to the shapes and connectors and I take a square one it's gonna be exactly the same size so I go maybe here and what I do is I actually create a little bit holding down the shift, the shift key I generate a little section that fits that uh, post-it note perfectly. So I kind of increase probably the, the size of it. It doesn't need to be as thick and as black. So I just, I leave the thick, I, I will leave the thickness, but I will change it to a, um, to, to a little bit of a grayish uh, color. And what I want to do is I usually go highlight both. You can highlight as many elements as you want, and then you have a contextual menu to edit those. So I, I, I usually do that. I change the font to something nicer. To marker felt, usually I really love this font. It's kind of you know written you know by hand, etc. So all I do is I do favorite animal, favorite animal. Then I add a description. Please um, uh, input um, the name the name of your animal, right? And then using the um, the post-it note colored accordingly, right? Accordingly. So that's that. And I probably just uh, change the color slightly, just something a little bit more grayish so it's not as pronounced. So that's one thing that I do, just give additional uh, description of, of what needs to happen. Additionally, I have this little thing here. And also I give Natalia a time for that. So time, two minutes. So that Natalia can always kind of, uh, you know, have that information in front of her. And this I usually do pretty pronounced. So maybe like dark blue or something like that, right? So this is the exercise. I introduce everybody to it. They go to their individual murals. I pre-generate those because I know who's going to be coming to the meeting. And then I structure it to, to do it this way. So that's the favorite animal. And uh, that's one thing. And also what I ask you to do is, is and name, right? So I do it this, uh, this way. I probably do it like that. So this is animal name. I drag and drop kind of, uh, I mean, drag over those to highlight those. And then using the option, uh, option key, I drag and copy those. And your name. This is obviously a very artificial and strange exercise. I would ask Natalia to input her name here, but this is how I would structure it nonetheless for this specific exercise. I'm giving it uh, two minutes. And what I always do then, once I have the structure in place, I think that somebody mentioned it. Uh, uh, I, Natalia mentioned it so that everybody um, has their own space and the, they're not moving elements around. So what I do is I highlight everything. I right click on that and I can lock it up. So I lock it. And that so that only facilitators, so me, can unlock it, or anybody that I give the powers of facilitator to to do that. I lock it, so even I cannot, you know, do it unless I unlock this thing over here. So I can unlock it whenever I want it. I'm gonna lock it in place, only facilitators. And then I, you know, let people go. Obviously, I prefer this pre pre the workshop. So I, it's all pre prepared. People just come in, and I just give them the time, give them the exercise, introductions. Off you go. And because it's structured so that it fits the post-it note perfectly, I can either input those two post-it notes in or allow that fun thing to happen uh, by Natalia herself. So I usually leave the spaces and let them, you know, just have and go crazy, uh, crazy with it. Um, okay, so uh, Natalia, does that kind of answer the question? Yep, lock it, rule it. <laughs> yeah, uh, lock it, rule, rule, rules them all, rules them all. All right, so that's uh, that. Going back to our little, where were we? There we go. So eight minutes to go for the main session. So that's how I structure these things. And I, again, always have that outcome in mind. Always know what the input is going to be or needed to be for those people to tackle all of those exercises using this specific phase of work. So the phases and the roles. And I know that I need to introduce people to it and summarize it and move on to the next one where, again, introduce it, allow for individual work, 
presentation individually, so pre-synthesized thoughts presented, group vote, small discussion, summary, off we go. And once I'm done with that, as far as the understanding of the phases goes, each one of those exercises has a pre, uh, predefined time, uh, time frame. So I'm pretty anal about that when it comes to minutes, but when you do count the minutes and use the stopwatch, it really, you know, um, I've using this specific structure, I would run um, myself, just me, um, five, uh, five different teams um, around, uh, it was a physical workshop, that, that was the last kind of more, most challenging one, uh, for the entire day, and we were down to the minute, you know, it was, I just had my little cheat sheet, and I knew exactly how many minutes I have for everything, broken down into, into every minute, and it really works when you actually do that. Because then you just walk around the workshop and you're like, okay, guys, three minutes, three minutes, three minutes, and everybody's on the same page. That's really crucial. All right, so we're like two minutes to go, guys. Uh, like, I'm kind of done. So um, if you want me to, to, to kind of uh, open up, oh, there's a few questions on the chat. So let me just see the battery is 65%. All right. Uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, so uh, look, it really thinks that's Natalia. Okay, no worries. Uh, is it possible to link the individual mural back to the primary mural after a set time period as a show of? Uh, of work. Yeah, well, there is, there's, it's kind of possible. So the way that I do it is I go to this, um, Natalia basically does that for me. Um, uh, Natalia is going to give me a hard time, you know, in the comments later on. It's like, yeah, what do you mean Natalia is going to take this thing for me? Um, anyway, uh, so, um, so there's some information here. There's some information here. So whatever attendee we have here, they can just highlight that, do a command C, co copy it, do it that way. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to go back. I'm going to unlock everything just to show you the structure. I have everything pre-prepared for Natalia to do that. So I'm going to go to my, you know, the, the, the main mural. And I know that there is a specific place for Natalia here, and it's somewhere around here, right? That kind of copies whatever she's been working individually. Obviously, it's locked in place. And if I go back, all that this attendee, uh, for example, Natalia needs to do now is just take the two post-it notes and she knows that she has a dedicated space for that in this specific mural. And all it takes is just a command V and it works just as well. So it is a, you know, pretty much a workaround, but it does work. You can copy uh, enormous amount of elements to your mural from in between murals as well. And it's pretty, or it's pretty neat when it comes to, um, to, to kind of running it uh, properly that way. Uh, Mural is pretty neat when it comes to also including some of the elements of inter integration. So if I, for example, take, I think, I hope that it will work. Uh, let me just go back to my um, fancy agenda. So if I do take, um, let's say the first part and I copy this from Excel and I paste it into the Mural, it keeps the structure and it just generates it into a, into a list of post-it notes, which, which is pretty powerful. So if you have any pre-made stuff that you want people to edit on the workshop itself, you can definitely do it um, this way. And um, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah. And then you can work around maybe with the colors a little bit, just make it a little bit more, you know, visually pleasing, it'll be easier to do. Also, you can play around with the type of that because you have this little element to switch the type. You can just switch type to maybe, let's do a circle, right? So we'll change that to circles. And already it's kind of uh, more visually pleasing. Uh, we can also change that maybe to with border, with no background, and yeah, and off we go. You know, so um, so this is pretty powerful when it comes to kind of integrating other 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 elements with mural, and that's what I heavily use definitely to, to kind of work with some prototypes of meetings as well, uh, etc. So that's that. Moving on to the, uh, is that answering the question? Oh, nope. Oh, awesome. Uh, um, what do we have here? Uh, stupid questions. The Salvatore, there are no stupid questions. There's just I'm I'm running the risk of answering uh, it stupidly, to be honest. So um, uh, let me see. Do you use this structure for all of your meetings? No, I use it for all of my meetings, not just the workshops. Every meeting that you go with uh, with me is going to have this pre-made structure, and I probably will come with some sort of a tool pre-made because I know this is the outcome we're trying to achieve. Uh, these are the individual people I've invited. They have a specific element to work with, and I just run the timer, you know, and I just manage it that way. And yeah, again, they, they leave overwhelmed because they're like, yeah, fuck, we've actually achieved something. It's done. It's recorded. It's something we can collaborate, collab, collaborate, collaborate, collaborate on later on. And yeah, it just, it just solves the issue. So definitely it's not a, it's not a stupid question. It's something that um, I can use as a structure for any meeting. 
Um, and it, you know, you've probably you know, been to many meetings, Salvatore, when, um, when it's just the discussion keeps on going and keeps on going. And it's like, guys, can we just get some fucking points out, you know, and just write something down. And there's usually like one person, usually me, writing, you know, the notes down. Then this note just ends up in an email somewhere. Nobody reads it ever. Uh, and then it just disappears. And it's like, you know, and, and you're like, you didn't get that memo? I mean, it was in the meeting notes. You know, do you remember that? No, I don't remember, man. It's like, I've got 500 emails a day. No way. So, um, so definitely having this uh, kind of collaboratively, co collaborate, collaboratively, is that even a word? I'm going to use a different one. Uh, when you're working together with people um, on this, you know, to have that available to you anytime uh, online is a massive thing to, 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 to have as, as a workshopee or uh, as a facilitator of meeting, project manager. So, so definitely something I leverage very heavily, regardless if I'm meeting people or um, if, if, it's just a, uh, if it's just a workshop as well. So this structure just works, you know, everybody has a say and we can actually vote on it pretty easily. So that's that. Uh, moving on to the next one, can you export board to JPEG or PPTX? Well, you can definitely do that. So let's just export our beautiful um, mural over here. We can do a PDF, we can do a PNG, or we can zip those files if we have put some post-it notes and maybe some files on it, it can actually zip it together into separate files. So that's pretty cool. I rarely use it though. Uh, but yeah, you can do a PNG and it's going to ish, uh, kind of generate a, um, a link into your email. So I'll just wait for that in the background and hopefully that will work. Just bear with me. Just move it to the side. I'll open up the Gmail and I'll show you how it did because sometimes this export is a little bit challenging. Um, so um, it'll come into the inbox shortly. So it takes probably like a minute or two. Um, to actually um, to actually do that. So uh, so you can definitely get, get the PDF or the PNG. Uh, sometimes it kind of tends to move the post-it notes around a little bit. So if you have a pre-made structure, it struggles sometimes, but it's pretty okay uh, recently. So that's pretty okay. Um, okay, uh, try Session Lab for the planning. Works perfect. Thank you very much, Andrea. That's awesome. So Sessions Lab, guys, there's a link to the uh, to Session Lab. I haven't used it. So thank you very much. That's really cool. I'll definitely... Uh, give it a give it a go. I'm just uh, because I, I don't know if Zoom is going to kill my uh, my uh, my chat memory of the chat list probably when I when I when I when I end the meeting. So thanks very much, Andrea. That's awesome. I'll definitely give it a uh, uh, a thorough look through. Thanks very much. Um, okay, Chris, quality of the video is very poor. So what ca I can do is actually share the screen so you can actually. Thank you for letting me know, Chris. That's awesome. Uh, let me just do this is the one. Share. Can you see it better now, guys? Hopefully you can. Just do that. All right, cool. Well, the, the problem with running Ecamm Live and Zoom at the same time and then sharing to screens and, and doing all of that, you know, the, the computer is struggling big time. This is like the, the kick-ass MacBook Pro, whatever, and, um, and I'm already on 61% of the battery. So also, if you're running kind of uh, these kind of calls and um, you're connected to many monitors. I've got like three monitors here. This uh, this tablet here. Uh, I've got one monitor to see you guys on the Zoom call, and I see, and I've got my laptop. The laptop is struggling. It's charging, obviously, but it's if we started. It had 97% of the battery. It's at, at 61. So if I would like to run a session like this for the entire day, I wouldn't be able to run all, all of these screens. So that's something I'm just discovering. So definitely, <clears throat> um, uh, kind of remember about the hardware limitations as well. So that's that. Moving on to the, to the next question, let me just open up the chat window. That's what I really dread when it comes to Zoom because it's really difficult to find all the chat. There you go. Where is it? Where have you, where have you put it? Where have you put it? Da -da 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 -da. Okay, I'm going to do it the other way. I'm going to stop the sharing and I'll, I'll start again. All right, so... um. Do, 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 do. That's Chris. Okay. And all again, Natalia, do you have, um, do you do any introduction to the tool to make sure that entities are comfortable and know how to use it? If so, how and when? That's exactly the first phase of working. Um, so let me just share the screen. That's just the one. Share that. And that's exactly uh, w what I mentioned when there is this introduction. So um, this is obviously for kind of individual exercises. So I would also kind of add maybe you know, 
an introduction to the actual uh, workshop itself, to the meeting. Hi guys, we've met here to do this and that. Show the outcome and kind of this is what we're trying to achieve. And then additional element when it comes to summary after everything's done. So if I manage it correctly, I should be left with four to five minutes to first of all, do the introduction for three minutes and summarize everything within two minutes, right? I believe that we finished like 20, 58. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, when you get into the stage of kind of managing your time, it's, it gets easier, you know, it gets just easier. So definitely so, I would definitely do that. Introduce to the workshop, to the outcome we're trying to achieve. Then tell the people, you know, let me just, maybe I'll show you one of the, mm, let me see if I've got something like that. Do, 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 do. Two more rooms. Oh, there you go. That's something I've been putting together for a, mm, for a Skillshare and Udemy course. It's going to be available on, on, uh, on our page as well. But yeah, this is, as you can see, part one and part two. So this is like two part workshop for one hour. And I basically, uh, when I invite people over, I'm like, okay, the entire meeting is going to be subdivided into two parts, part one and part two. I time myself. So I'm giving myself two minutes to do it. So I know exactly what am I going to be talking about? Part one, we will need 30 minutes to do it. There's a problem list that we're going to be um, voting against. Then we're going to generate ideas. We will have six minutes for the vote. 24 minutes for the idea generation and on voting of those. And what I'm trying to get out is getting one key cool idea chosen out of the whole list. And I've got five people attending, right? And when I've done the time management on this specific tool, it turned out that 20, 6 plus 24 equals 30 minutes. So I was able to calculate the 30 minutes at the very end, right? Once I've done the, um, the, the kind of the math. And also for... Uh, for part two, that's 22 minutes. So, because, you know, I've given people three minutes to actually present, et cetera, et cetera. So, but as you can see, the structure is here. The introduction, individual work, individual presentation, vote, and summary. So I'm always keeping that structure in place just to manage it as much as I can. And obviously, you know, fuck-ups happen. So um, you need to be ready for that and give yourself some buffer. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, um, it's better to have that structure than not have it. Um, or it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, you know? So, so that's that. Okay, moving on. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, and also, um, let me know if this answers the questions, Natalia and, uh, and the gang. Um, let me just go to everyone. Okay. What else is there? Um, okay. And I, okay, cool. Really glad to hear. And Veroni is uh, asking one final thing. Could you please show us some very complex board uh, how do you maintain it? Well, this is pretty complex when it comes to this one, for example, that I'm sharing uh, as far as that little training sesh is, 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 is doing, but I could actually try and come up with or show you a uh, desktop. That's fine. Okay, I'll share that. Okie dokie. And I believe that, okay, that's cool. Um, so uh, let me just go back. I try to keep these not as massive for the workshop, I've got some working kind of murals that are more like a workshop for me when I just, you know, put some notes together, etc. I can show you maybe one of those. Um, let me see, you know, I do some maybe pricing on it, you know. This, so I kind of keep it like this, you know, kind of, you know, note-based, you know. So it's, it's kind of my way of structuring things together and kind of putting together. This is like a, a project scope that, I, that I'm putting together for one of the, uh, one of the, um, one of the, yeah, companies that we're working for. So that's, uh, I use it this way. And I try not to get overwhelmed with, you know, or, or try not to generate too big of a um, um, of a tool. So if we go to, for example, the 1900 Academy, mm, let's go with maybe, I don't know, with this one, for example, the business hypothesis map. I try to keep it as um, as concise. As you can see, the, the structure, the little, um, the little elements, kind of the, the, the squares, you can, you can definitely see the structure here, what's to be done, and then I just run it, manage it, and I try to keep them concise. So if I need, you know, another another meeting or another workshop, I try to keep it um, on a separate one. So I create another mural, there's another outcome to be achieved, etc. So I kind of try to, uh, to mitigate that so that I don't have this massive mural that I need to scroll around because they tend to lag after a certain level of, um, of size, right? So that's what I try to mitigate. Thanks very much for being here. Uh, and it really brings, you know, warm feelings to my heart. Whenever I see a, a packed audience of people wanting to kind of find out more about, you know, remote sessions, etc. And um, 
if you can let me know about what kind of topics you would like me to cover, you know, in the future, design thinking wise, user experience wise, uh, does the time frame suit you, you know, or would you prefer this to be in the morning, in the evening, whatever, let us know because uh, we don't read minds, <laughs> you know, we don't read minds uh, yet anyway. So it'd be really cool to, um, to kind of hear more about your needs, you know, and problems or struggles you might be having about, you know, when it comes to experience design, design thinking, service design, UI, UX, and I'm sure that we'd be able to kind of help out in some way, shape or form. So, yeah, thank you very much for being here with me and it just really, you know, it really matters. So um, take care, guys, stay safe, and I will see you on the Monday or on the Thursday or on any vlog that we're doing and, you know, just be with us. And um, yeah, struggle on, struggle on, stay safe. Take care, guys.